thank you so much for spending time talking with me, Gerard. I'm wondering if there's something that you would like to share with the permaculture community about your practice of permaculture? Oh, look, there's, there's heaps. One of my little bugbears is the, um, I call it the fallacy of the food forest. Right. I, I may not create many friends here. It's a brilliant concept. You know, and a, a forest community is a, a, has a closed canopy and you've got all your layers. And so a food forest is just where you substitute those plants that are in a forest for food producing plants. And so you've got the high canopy trees and you've got the, the creepers. And so you, you have grapes and you have ground covers. So you have carrots and, and your herbs and your, and your small bushes and rhubarb and potatoes. And, and you get this whole food forest going. And it's a fantastic idea. Now, what I'm trying to do here at, at our farm at Eagle Rice Farm, well, when Human Hole, well, they stood on top of my hill on their their journey south and what they described as they looked south over my place and over the Murray Valley in the middle valley was they, they basically described an English parkland and so what that is is a grassy woodland so in a in a forest all the the sunlight all the inputs the sunlight the the which is the energy the water the soil everything comes together to create what's required to support a forest. Now, in a grassy woodland, there's it's different soil, different climate, different rainfall, different sunshine, different energy. And what when it all comes together, it can support a grassy woodland. It can't support a forest community. And so what we're trying to do is create a food grassy woodland. If I try to create a food forest in this environment, I can do it. But it's not good permaculture because I can only do it by having inputs into the system. Care for Earth says I don't dig up someone else's backyard and transport a heap of rock phosphate down so I can spread it across my land so I can grow veggies. Uh, Care for Earth means I don't take all the water I can possibly get and use it to grow, grow veggies. So what we're trying to design is a system that's uh, that works within itself. So it's food, grassy woodland. And uh, for, for instance, where my fruit trees are, I've put them on swales or just below swales. And the swales are about 20 metres apart. And I planted the fruit, fruit trees five metres apart along the, the swale. And they will be pruned to to just be small trees so that the, the canopy is never going to touch. And the, the distance between the swales is the grassy part of the woodland. And in that grassy part, I can substitute the grassland species with food growing species. Now, we still don't have enough water for food growing species. So what we're doing along the, the grassy areas, we're creating um, another one of my bugbears, we're creating hoop houses that we don't believe in plastic. So we've designed living hoop houses, which are um, shaped um, concrete reinforcing mesh, uh, four of them together. So they, they end up making a, a hoop house uh, a bit over two metres high and about three metres wide and 10 metres long. Fortunately, these swales run east-west, so the hoop houses run east-west. And that means that the energy, the sun will never enter that hoop house from the southern side. So on the southern side of the hoop house, the, the, we're planning to plant evergreen creepers. And at the base of the southern side, we'll put some corrugated line to, to reflect that winter sun in. And on the northern side, we'll plant perennial and deciduous creepers. And so in winter, they the northern side drop their leaves and allow the energy to get in. And in summer, they'll green up and create a cool dappled sunshine. We've got bigger problem with sun in February than we have in than cold in July. And those hoop houses are interspersed throughout the fruit trees. 
So integrate rather than segregate. We've integrated our fruit tree plantings. And when, when we came to pl plant along the, the swale, we planted a, a plum, a peach, an apple, a nectarine, a different sort of plum, a different sort of peach, a pear, and a different sort of nectarine. And so we, we don't have two of the one tree next to each other. And it creates a the, the food grassy woodland. It's easy to stand in the paddock and explain that. <laughs> so I always say you look at the surrounding forest to give you a guide on how many layers you could and what type of species you could have, right? Is it possible, because there are dry land food species like pomegranate, olive, that sort of species, is it possible you could build a food forest with dry land species? For sure. I didn't want to. Why is that? You've got a large property. Yeah, we've got 250 acres. And the that type of plant community I've designated as natural revegetation oh. and so we've planted twenty thousand trees on the farm mm -hmm. and we've got areas that are re we've revegetated yeah. so to balance locking up that land which i'm all in favor for we need to still have some profitable country mm. you know over the last 20 years my my whole wage has gone into the farm mm. when i bought it it didn't have a fence post on it 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 was very very sparse with no merino country so we've had to do everything so we've we've des designed it to be productive it's it's a it's a real toss-up you know our first farm philosophy is that, that welfare outcomes take precedence over economic outcomes and that welfare means animal welfare human welfare environmental welfare introspective welfare everything takes precedence over economics so that's how we've run for 20 years um, but now the economic imperative is starting to come forward a bit. So it's it's a bit of a challenge at the moment. It'd be very easy to buy a bag or something and chuck it on, but we don't do that. One of the keys is you're trying to select species that can survive in that sort of environment. Mm. So you, you can't have everything. Simple as that. Like we learned it as kids <laughs> and you forget it when you get into permaculture. You can't have everything. So you plant what your system can support. Mm. 